So uh, working with, with Jackson and Joni is when I started my transition from being a, just a, a photographer to being a, an audio engineer. And in those days, audio engineers wasn't real technical. It was basically just turning a couple of knobs. You know, it wasn't like what you think it is today. So uh, with Jackson, the, the crew was four people. It was myself and uh, one other guy, uh, um, and well, as Bob Stern was his name, he had his own sound company, but that was the sound crew. And then on the lighting side, it was Ed Stewart and uh, uh, Steve Cohen. That was the lighting crew. That was it. And we did everything. You know, it was so simple. We were playing like theaters and stuff. So um, that's where I was kind of learning audio. And it was such a relief not having to be taking photos. You know, so that's kind of where I was heading. I said, the, uh, the thing about, you know, shooting for Rolling Stone or any of those magazines is you had to shoot. You had to shoot all the time. And, and you know, and, even, and I always picked the bands that I wanted or they would assign me like Moody Blues or something to shoot. And it was, it was okay, but it was like not as much fun as I wanted, you know. So I started, you know, ask Bill if he needed help with anything. So I got, because I had known Bill Graham for a few years now, so he says, yeah, just come over and, and help out uh, at any of the Berkeley shows, you know. So that's where I started, you know, at the Berkeley Community Theater, which I had been shooting, you know. And um, then I started doing the, the Fillmore's, you know. So, uh, or, well, actually Fillmore and Winterland. And uh, it was like a whole new release. And I really got into audio because it was easier than lugging all the cables that you use for lighting. So and my, my ears are actually pretty good. So by the time 73 hit, you were at Kazar with Bill Graham and Led Zeppelin. Mm -hmm. for that and massive show, the show that I was begging you for pictures for. You yeah. said, no, I didn't, I wasn't paid to take pictures in. I was like, wow. Yeah, no, we were there. We, we did this. That setup was like a day, you know, because it was outdoors. It was, those were like the first, this was before Days on the Green, all those shows. This was, you know, like Kazar Stadium um, in San Francisco. And... Uh, so that's what I was, I was learning that trade, you know, and it's just being stagehand kind of things. But, you know, we were setting up the PA, in which in those days for those outdoor shows was massive, you know, uh, compared to today, it's like some people use for monitors, you know, but in, in those days it was a big deal. And that's when I was more involved. I had also been doing audio for Santana at that time because uh, they were... Uh, they work with Bill a lot, so I end up doing monitors, and monitors I enjoy because it's you're working directly with the musicians, you know. And I rather work with artists than with management, so that was my thing, you know. So, um, you know, and that's where I, I continued on doing uh, uh, monitor work, and I ended up working for Bob Dylan and the band. Uh, I was their monitor engineer for that, that 74 tour. And, and so I was starting to peek into that. You know, that was really the thing. And I, I, I worked for George Harrison. I was George Harrison's monitor engineer. So um, I was totally satisfied artistically because, I, like I said, I'm working with the artists and, you know, I'm contributing to them. You know, uh, I'm not taking from them. Well, it's a shame you couldn't have worked with somebody who had made it. Well, you got to start with the, guy, the new guys. And that's, you know, I figured I'm in this business. I might as well learn from them, too. And, and they're going to learn from me. And, it, and the thing about the George Harrison tour, it was a lot, all, um, yeah, all studio musicians. You know, it had a 16-piece Indian orchestra with an eight-piece rock band in front. And every one of them were studio musicians. And we were out on tour and they had never been out of the studio. So we were doing a sound check at some place in Seattle at the Coliseum up there. And we had to stop because they were hearing sounds they had never heard before. They were hearing echoes, you know. So I had to explain to them what they were hearing, you know. So it's, it's that kind of thing. But it's like you're working with the artist, making them feel comfortable, and you're giving them what you want. Working with Santana, we traveled all over the world, and I was doing for a... For, uh, uh, an eight-piece band, I, I was doing ten mixes because I'd have to switch in the middle of a song, play the song with them, you know. 
so um you know i was i was i was taking photos but it, like it goes back to where i started i was taking my own photos i wasn't taking for anybody else so that's when i started uh you know really appreciating the whole i don't want to say business because it's not to me it wasn't a business it was my hobby you know <laughs> and uh yeah, you you want to bring all the all your tools, you know, and whatever tools you have, you, you want to use that to, for your creative process.